Welcome back everybody to PIL. Today we're casting our second match of the day for myself, Monkey DG, and I'm joined by my co-caster, Bugum. Yo, what's up? Can I get some of Ohio's in chat now? Oh, nice. Um, uh, so, uh, for the match today we've got uh, an interesting game between two, uh, I believe these are B-bracket teams, yep. Uh, I versus uh, Tide. Sorry, I'm pulling up a stream list because I've got a bunch of different streams to look at. Um, right, so... Different uh, different teams for sure. Uh, I know that both of them are fairly fresh to Jaeger, although I do recognize a lot of the players on I. Some of them, some of them Jaeger, are Jaeger players. They've been here for a little while, and I know Tide's been at least some of the players have been playing on Jaeger. I don't know if they've done six v six format yet. Um, so both, you know, we see a lot of fresh faces, and I think we're going to see some interesting strats and and play styles from both. Um, we are going to pull up the Oach quickly, quickly before I jump on. So Tide's going to be playing TR for this match, and I is going to be playing VS. In terms of rosters, we're starting six for Ty. We've got Varunda or Varunda, um, Ascender, Luffy, and Tadbink as heavy assaults, so standard load up there. Vitamin as Bolt, and I don't think that's Vitamin C. That's a different Vitamin. Uh, and then uh, uh, Anethul, I'm sorry, I don't know him that well, uh, is the LA for Tide. So standard, four heavy, one Bolt, one LA loadout. I, on the other hand, has got six heavies, looks like. I would expect them to maybe play a Bolt on Pale, uh, which is the map, but I'll get to that in a moment. But in any case, we've got Navimus as a heavy, Retro. Uh, Navimus and Retro both I recognize as uh, players who have been on Jaeger and I think have played in either Open League or the new uh, Planetside Open games that launched recently. Uh, Max Suicide as well, familiar name. Puff8, Jotun, user or Jotun, the and the Black Angel. Got a user join, hello. Hello, user. Hello, I'm guessing you've got the right script set up on the server. Uh, we are currently using, let me double check with one we have right now. Which one are you guys using? First one, 5020. 5020, let me just quickly confirm that. Um, Halftime scores. We're using, sorry, you're using 5020, we have 5030, so do we swap that? Yeah, I'm using 5020 for this one. Okay, I'm making that change right at now. That way the stream can easily see who's winning. Cool. Hopefully. Uh, you guys are ready to start once you make that change? Yep, just give us two seconds. Okay, I see the change. Yeah, go ahead and uh, we need like two minutes and we'll be good to go. Yep, that's fine. All right, so flipping User back to the six, six starters. So as I mentioned, yeah, so uh, good showing from both. I don't know actually who their starting six are uh, for the like main roster. I assume that they're both sending some of their best players here. This is, should be a close match. I'm really interested to see how this plays out because both of them have been, um, for lack of a better term, stomped by some of the other players, uh, some of the other teams in their brackets, or will be if they haven't already. Uh, there's definitely a big skill gap between the likes of... Uh, um, you know, B-Hot, Ziz, like that backs kind of thing, and uh, some of the newer newer Jaeger teams, so I'm really interested to see how this match plays out. Um, I'm saying this as if they're they're blue bracket teams, like I want to confirm that I'm not losing my mind here. These are not uh, these are not like uh... These are blue bracket, yes. Okay, Indeed. okay. Yeah, D I bracket. like forget, forgive my unfamiliarity with some of the new teams, I just haven't had a chance to kind of look. We've got so many teams playing pill this year, or this season, that uh, I mean, it's fantastic, but at the same time I can only learn so much as a, as a streamer. Um, best of one map, as I mentioned, we are playing Pale, and I don't think we've seen a lot of Pale recently. It's it's not a bad map by any means. It's pretty um, even in the sense that the map itself is uh, like a mirror image for both sides. So the starting Sundays are not uh, 90 degrees. Like, they're not on either sides of the map, but the bases that they fight over are parallel and uh, kind of mirror images. Um, but it is a bit of a slower-paced, death ball-favored map where... Usually the team that wins, not always, but usually the team that wins is the one that plays closest together with most heavies playing in the same spot. And um, yeah, we're going to see if they kind of favor that kind of mentality of playing as a death ball, as a group of heavies with usually a bolt pressing from the roof. Or if maybe they have some other setup where they're going on flanks and stuff. Yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the in-match camera. Let me just uh, switch that scene here so you guys can see. Hey, give me a second, I'll be back. Pale Canyon, there we go. So just like the, uh, just like I was mentioning, uh, these two buildings here, so this one and this one are both mirror images of each other, which means that whichever team is pushing in, mean, um, it's a pretty even fight, I'd say. There's no one side that is strongly favorable over the other. Uh, maybe you could say the side with the hill because they can get some bolts down towards the, uh, towards the silos, but realistically, this is one of the few maps like Aiken where uh, there's no one side that can really dominate over the other. 
I'm going to be following I in. Uh, I'm just going to quickly put in chat that we're... And wait for the ref's call. So traditional start here uh, is for um, VS here to wrap around this side of the hill. Usually both teams will shoot a couple of deaths at each other. You never know. If one of those hits, you can get some splash damage or rarely a kill, which is always really fun to see. Um, push in through the first door here I'm back into here closed lobby. Side. Sure. Uh, this is open lobby. Open because there's doors. Calls here are a bit uh, different for each team. The different people prefer different things. Bottom 50. Your mic's messed up. Okay. We will start the next tick on zero. So that is in one minute and 33 seconds. Minute 33. Mic should be better. Um, we've got upstairs leading to roof. Similar on the other side. Another stairs leading to roof. And then, again, as I mentioned, balcony. Uh, this base is completely mirrored, so the other building looks exactly the same, just in the opposite orientation. Um, roof is really, really strong for a bolt uh, to be able to, you know, get shots down towards point, down towards the balcony on the other side, just really suppressing the other team. And uh, depending on who you ask, I really think that this map favors a passive bolt. I know that, uh, at least on my team, Josh, not a huge fan of this map, tends to be One an aggressive bolter. Match start. Uh, and, you know, Turtle, for example, more of a passive bolter tends to like the map a little more at least that's what i've seen in past pickups game but that's kind of mirrored by a lot of the uh, teams that play this play this map you either play all heavies for go the bolt not usual but if you do play bolt they're usually kind of sticking behind on the roof one thing to note is la game so i don't know begong if you've played a lot of pale recently um but uh la game at least to my mind is not really a crucial component of this map 30 seconds no i don't think so either just because most i mean you can get onto the roof. I mean, you can get onto balcony and roof of each building without having seconds. to be in LA. There's yeah, always, there's a nice there's wall. A climb. bunch of wall jumps on all over the building to be able to get up to different entry yeah. points of the building. And I'll argue that the drops Kid, for the LA aren't nine, as strong eight, either because seven, the heavies can uh, six, play most of the places five, as you as LA. Four, three, two, one, begin. We are off. Let's see I set up here. It looks like they've got six heavies. Exactly what was written on their lineup. One is that a bolt? Actually. One bolt. One yeah, bolt. Yeah, I missed bolter. that. I'm just going to quickly take a look at Tide here. That looks like five heavies and a bolt as well. Okay, so it looks like they're both doing the same strat here. Makes sense. Nerd playing the roof of V. You can get a good couple shots out here, but not a good place to hold for very long. Huge balk push from TR here. They're really playing tightly together, which is, I think, really important, especially for the opener. Uh, trying to get cap early on. I don't know if that's the best call to make. Yeah, because, I mean, point control is kind of important, but at the same time, if you get stuck down in the point here, it's so easy to do exactly what we're seeing here, where VS kind of gets shots down on you from the windows and from the third floor. Like, yeah, you get cap, but if you're going to get fragged because of it, good bolt, good bolt, then it's not always worth it. Ooh, big picks in the window. Ascender alone. Let's see if he gets any kill. Forgive the cam. Uh, looks like no, he gets killed by Retro. Hey, but that bolt on top of V is spotting out. Both the Tide Heavies walking in through their uh, eyes balcony right there. Mm -hmm. So playing on that V, really paying off, just watching it, seeing that flank come in. Super passive hold, though. That's really far away from the fight, and uh, I'm not confident he's going to land his shots, but uh, if he can get spots off, that's sometimes enough. Looks like VS trying to get the point back in their favor. This is a map where nine point difference from the point cap can actually be a big game changer, especially for two teams that are really close. Uh, off the opener, we didn't see any team dominate. We're at four or six and eight points respectively for TR and VS. Max suicide trying to push the side. See this one. Tide Balter really holding down that rooftop and just kind of keeping VS stuck in their building, taking out the. VS Bolter as well. Wins one, goes down to Ascent. Vitamin here playing the lobby with TR. With, sorry, with the other TR heavy. Smart play. Kind of play a bit passively. You've got point control. You don't need to really peek this doorway, especially when there's VS heavies in the windows. I'm noticing a lot of, like, I don't know about you, but I feel like both these teams are playing a bit too conservatively. I'm not seeing a lot of, like, pushes into the other person's building. Like, it looks like they're both just trying to wait for the point cap to finish for either side. Yeah, it's 
farthest that I've seen it is just Tide going in through that balcony flank, and actually the Tide Heavy, or Bolter is going to be going to the second floor. Here we go, we got a Tide Heavy on the balcony. pushing into the, pushing in actually, Tide's pushing in. Oh, Max Roos, I guess, with one HP. Gets a pick, though, on on, uh, on the bolt. Fantastic. Goes down. More kills actually. inside. Camera is so hard to play Tied. here. Big. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is the push Has I wanted to see. Yeah, yeah. Right this, this is what I want to see, because once you get control of the enemy build, you can really lock it. Retro on the wall jump here I was talking about. He's playing the balk window. Such a weird vertical play with two people above, two people below. Looks like TR's coming back down. Black Angel gets away, but 100% spotted. Yep, and is going to get pushed from withdrawal. So strat-wise, how do you play Pale? Like, do you have a preference for pushing into the space? Do you know if one team should be doing one thing differently? I mean, not, I, I see this base not really... I mean, if you death ball, you're probably going to win just because of how spread out the base is for the most part. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you can run around in buddy teams and kind of just pog out the match. If you have I 100% agree. Enemies. This is one of the, and I'm not trying to insult anyone that likes Pale, but this is a pretty small brain map. Uh, there's there's not a lot of like coordination in terms of flanks and dropping like you might see on Gon and Shaq Xeno kind of thing. Um, honestly, any of the maps, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is probably the smallest brain map because um, it really relies on just 1v1, 2v2, 3v3 skill, making sure you're peeking with a buddy, and not so much map awareness dropping together. Like, for example, these teams pushing on, on Valk right now, it's not like TR has an opportunity to drop from the roof or something to kind of push up behind. It's all about winning your 1v1s or 2v2s and making sure you're playing closely with a buddy. Good hold from the TR Heavy. Oh, nearly gets 3 picks. Shields cracked on the last one. Get out of my way. Who do you think you VS again trying to just hold their own building. They lost cap and point cap is starting to widen here. We're seeing tied at 37 points, I at 18. Uh, I think I definitely has a chance to come back from this if they kind of stay with that aggressive balling that they had in the first like in the opener. I don't see it so much right now, and I think that's what's that's what's getting them, is they're not playing tight enough together, and, uh, I mean, if you're losing 1v1s, that's one thing, for sure, and I think we've seen a couple of the, uh, of the tight heavies just really wrecking I in those 1v1s, but at the same time, I just really not doing well playing buddied, except for here, we're liking that. Navmus almost gets his commie out in time, but what was that kill from? I didn't even see where the shots came from. Tide pushing in, wiping out I out of their building right now, and one <laughs> person left on... Good pitch on the bottom. They, they Actually, know some are spotted. Walter's inside of the eye building right now, going to its roof. Oh, the bolt dropped it. Oh, bolt 1v1 on the roof. This heavy totally getting in the way of a Bushido 1v1. Shaking my head. Bolt goes down. Jordan pushing upstairs. Doesn't realize that there's a heavy right behind him, though. Oh, no. A bit late on the uptake. They're just... I don't think I've ever seen heavies run past each other more than in this game in the first, like, five minutes that we've seen. That's pale for you, though. Bolt on the railing of Balcony on the other team. That's a really strong spot to, to hold. The only downside is if VS choose to play an LA, or even a heavy and they get up to V, like, if you put a heavy or a bolt here, you get really good shots now. They're playing Balk Window. I'd like to see somebody do the walk. Okay, I was about to say, I want to see somebody do the walk oh, line. Oh, yep, and then gets the oh you gotta line. get these shots, dude. Come on. Gets okay, the, finally. Uh, Probably the takes top. a whole mag from the Orion. Uh, but he got the kill. You know what? I can't complain. He got the kill. And sometimes impulse can be really whoop. Nearly two picks. Varuna getting away with one HP. Meted. Smart move. Back on the stairs. He's gonna try to regroup, play with his team. There you go. See? That's really smart. I really like to see what TR is doing right now. They're really making sure that they're playing with players at all times. If one gets caught out of position, they're they're backing up, finding some buddies, playing together. These three guys are playing so tight right now. Really making sure that they don't let uh, VS slip in and try to get a flank on them. This tide balter is being a real annoyance for I right now. Hitting body shotting or head shotting almost everywhere. Where is he playing? Into that building. He just, just went onto balcony. He's been playing all over the place. He was on top of the railing, on top of the roof. Now he's on the railing on balcony. He was playing over by silos. It's just kind of everywhere. Look at this retro card position. He had nobodies with him. I think this is what's what's getting eye. Is like retros 
arguably a strong shooter. I've played against him in in, uh, in open league and in uh, maybe in Pogma, he's played recently. But uh, not a bad shooter at all. But no matter how good of a shooter, you could be Zyros. If you peek into three TR heavies, if they're if they're peeking together, like you're you're gonna lose that. You might get a trade, but yeah, that's a situation where he really had to wait. Suicide alone on the roof now, probably spotted. I think so because withdrawal is. Yeah, they're trying to. They're, they're debating him. Like they don't want to push this alone. But look, there's three heavies now. Double peeking. He makes the smart call of running to Balk, but he was spotted. Gets killed. Yeah. Ty just playing so tightly together. Like this is like DDRG level of uh, of death balling. That was the first Conx I think I've seen all game. Yeah, Conx not really super useful on this map just because of how open it is. You can easily get around a corner. Of a, I I will agree know, with that. In the building, there's just so many areas you can get around a corner away from a conk inside the building. Especially with Ox Shield, where so for people who don't know implants very well, Ox Shield allows you to use a med kit before you get hit by the conk, and it'll negate the conk's effects. On a map like this, where you can pretty much see the conks if they're gonna hit you, like if I know a conk's on the bottom of the stairs, I have I can run upstairs, probably get away from it, or just eat a med kit and it's not like a map where gone under track or other powerhouses where you're gonna have to get you might get double or triple conk like here you might get one conk every few minutes which is what we're seeing here and it's easy to either dodge them as you mentioned or you know take that med kit if they're running off yeah for sure and once again this tied playing four so tight people right there yeah. that was on top of silos and just wiping the, out yeah. the few players on the side of their building which is going to allow him to push into the I building and gain control of it. Most of I is on respawn, waiting for everyone to get on respawn. Walter, once again, if not hitting headshots, is body shotting people going into the I building, which is going to delay that push. It, nothing is more aggravating than that. Look at that nice shot. Nothing is more aggravating than getting body shotted by a bull. Good drop Ooh. On behind the I push. Interesting choice to have his guy. Ooh, Ch very Ch clean. Help. Very clean body shot kill. I really want to see his HSR after this. It's probably going to be like 20%, but you know what? I can't even complain. He's holding down the fort pretty well from the room. And unless he gets counterbolted or VS run in Icarus jump shed LA, he's not going to get pushed very easily. Nerd trying to take shots at the TR spawn. Probably not the right call when he's being bodied by uh, Anithuil here. Stop wiggling, dude. Get off the roof. It's low HP. You should take a med kit. Retro goes down alone. Oh, no, he had a buddy with him, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. And again, TR, like, so tightly playing together. Really know how to play payout. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say that, that Tide has practiced this map many times. Uh, and if they haven't, then kudos to them because they're playing it perfectly. Uh, they, like, really they're, they're not playing, actually, like, I've seen... Sorry. I is, taking, I is taking over Tide's building right now. They're going through silos and going into the Tide building right now. They're switching buildings pretty much. Risky because they can get spotted, but uh, I mean, it might work. But as I was saying, yeah, so like different play styles for sure. Like uh, I've seen some of the Beehawk guys, some of the Ziz guys like really play this 1v1 aggressively, kind of fragging out individually, and that works for them. But uh, when the skill gap is arguably small between Tide and I, like it looks like Tide is clearly far ahead of I right now, but... I don't think the individual skill gap is huge, and uh, and I think what's really punishing I is just Tide's ability to stay super close together uh, on all the pushes. Yeah, for and sure. Falling tide a buddy team. I, Other, I mean, the only person that's really playing by themselves is the Bolt. And Doesn't matter because you can't side. get pushed. Yeah, you can't get pushed because all the Tide heavies are always playing together. And when it's the Max pushes... suicide on a big flank. And when I pushes into the tide stack, even if they get all the picks, the bolt by the end of the fight gets there and cleans it up, which is what we saw in the last I push into their own building. Mm -hmm. Big wraparound flank. This is the Gellos flank, right? He's going to come around, get one kill, and then get killed. <laughs> There's the one kill. I'll see you now. I think everyone else like, tied his wife off that <laughs> yeah, The silent killer man comes in, gets one. Runs away. Okay, now you got a buddy. This is smart. I think I I'm gonna call that like wishful thinking, maybe, but I really think that was good comms. I may trade a buddy with him. That double peak, fantastic play. Really gotta back out because Varun is there. Ooh, gets the bolt. Good work from Suicide there. Navmus goes Suicide down, unfortunately, but I think that was a good trade. Getting getting the bolt. Eventually, but goes uh, down. yeah, he was spotted for sure and uh, got killed. Definitely did better than Gellos though. So yeah, I mean that that's a pretty low bar. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's really like yeah. Withdrawal again, good pick. That's two picks now that he's had this life. First on the bow. Conked down on Black Angel. Black Angel gonna be double conked here? I don't know, Black Angel conked once and then TR pushing another. Double peek now, he's got it back. Withdrawal 
W keying after. Desi's out. Interesting. I haven't actually seen a lot of Desi's this. Two minutes left to go. We're seeing almost double scores now from Tide. Um, VS caught so far out of position. Nobody upstairs. Really an empty, empty base on this side. Let's see what the other side looks like. Okay, it looks like they've actually regained control of their side now. Um, Tide and I mostly fighting over I's base. Yeah. Bolt playing really aggressively up on the balk. Oh, good shot. Good shot. He's really got to help his team. Oh, another good shot. Dude, that's two in a row now. Uh, he's popping off. Yeah, the type bolter is really playing well. He's. I mean, looking at the point, it, it makes sense. Picks. He's at 22 net. That, that's that's crazy, dude. That's insane. He's doing really good. I'm just picking yeah. the eye bolter right there on top. And of it's the really, roof. really, really hard for the VS to play against a good bolt because you feel like there's nothing you can do when you play against a good bolt because it's not like it's something that you can counter against. Like you can't always wiggle away. Like you don't see them. They're they're just they're just there. They headshot you when you respawn. Like there's not much you can do about it. The only way to counter a good bolt is with a better bolt. And especially with the long, very long sight lines on this map, it's yep. difficult yep. to see a bolt sitting on the roof ready to pop and in su until it's too late. Surprisingly, he's making the aggressive play work. Like, he's not playing on his home base on his third floor. He's playing on the uh, on the enemy base's third floor and balcony. And I think the only reason it's working for him is because his heavies are able to lock down control for him. Like, he, this, like, Anithwell here does not have to worry about getting pushed from behind or from the roof, which is, you know, traditionally what bolts would have to worry about. Because the heavies are doing such a good job of locking it down, it's basically like protecting the VIP uh, as he gets all the kills. Yeah, for sure. Plus 26 net now. Really, really making a huge statement uh, for his team I'm, here. I'm interested to see his damage assist because I, I've been seeing him body shot by almost all the heavies running in to mm -hmm. the building. MVP for sure of the game. I'm um, looking at scores now with 20 seconds left. 116 to 51. Definitely in Gets Tide's favor here. I bolter again. Oh, suicide now on a, on a side door flank. 100% sp spotted and low. Let's see the one we want. Ooh, got baited, dude. Baited. That's, that's aggravating because uh, Varinda got them both down to 1 HP. I've been there. <laughs> and you just, you're begging your team to come refrag. You're begging them, but nobody's there. End of half. End of half. All right, there we go. Uh, so it looks like they did get ended up refragging as the last kills of the game, uh, but they didn't count. Unfortunately, looking at the scores, uh, the, the two picks there were just after time. That's gotta suck. It All right. Really yeah, score I screen mean, now. Just uh, the Balter is uh, that's insane. Uh, yeah, it's it's tricky. I, I know the meta is not to put up. I have HSR on there again. Don't worry about HSR for the individual players. It's not that important. Focus on it for the Bolter. Um, and I, it's so funny because Anithwal with, with 27 kill, 27 net, 34 kills, all of them counting, only a 50% HSR, meaning that half of his kills are actually body shots or knives, um, which is just, that's just funny to me. Uh, on the, I mean, that's actually not any better for I, um, the I Bolter has 0% HSR with three kills, so that's yeah, an oof. Been, I mean, it's a very big oof. He's been locked out of the base pretty much yeah. the entire time. He's been having to play around his eye almost the entire game just because Anithal is just pogging. Yeah, but 0% HR means you haven't even landed explained. like one hit on the enemy bolt as a headshot. So okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear off the HSRs because I don't, again, I don't want to bring, bring focus to it. It's not really uh, uh, a an important metric, I think, to show. Um, but we can go down the rest of the scores while I do that. Do you want to take care of Tide? Uh, yeah, we have a. Uh... Varun on net nine, uh, Ascender, uh, just going even on the score right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Putin going net six, which we're all going five. Obviously, the Bolter going insane with 27, and uh, Tans with uh, net five, and also an uh, getting 11 damage assists, which is up there inside with the like above most of the heavies other mm -hmm. than Ascender. So, just like I said, he's. Most of the time, if he doesn't get the pick on a heavy walking into the, the their own building, it's you know getting a body shot and then they have no health going into a one v one with the mm -hmm. heavies. Yep, yep. I'll I'll I'll, I'll attest to that too. Uh, on I side, we've got. And I know I said I was going to get rid of the HSR, so I haven't done that yet. Um, but I can still go over the scores just fine. Uh, Max suicide, 15 kills that counted, 17 total. So it's probably two Desi kills. Uh, 
minus three. So he's actually doing probably the best on his team. And that's not surprising. I know Max Suicide has played a lot on live. Good, solid, two kitter heavy, and, you know, a fair amount on Jaeger as well. Navamus, another familiar name, minus eight, not doing too hot with only 12 kills counting this half. But again, probably up there in terms of uh, kills for his team. Uh, Bolt, Nerd, um, and, you know, this could be just fresh Jaeger. Maybe an inexperience with Pale. It's possible that, that I didn't practice Pale enough. Definitely viable. Um, but only three kills in the game. 0% HR means they're all body shots, minus 11 in score. Black Angel, minus 12, six kills in the game. Uh, Joe 10, minus 12, seven kills. And Retro, minus seven. Retro, another player I do recognize the name. I thought he'd be doing a little better here. Um, again, I'm going to maybe chalk this up to just lack of practice on Pale. We're not seeing the same coordination and tight gameplay as Tide. Because um, in terms of 1v1 abilities, yeah, there is definitely some room for improvement. Um, but at the same time, I think both teams stand to uh, both teams stand to come a little closer on points. 118 to 55. I I'm I'm going to go ahead and let me say insurmountable for second half. Unless I can really, really do some damage to uh, to Tide and really bring this back another way. Ref's probably ready though. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cam back up. Yeah, and I don't, I don't see them coming back from this either. I think with... Anith will just popping off as he is now and the tide heavies I think being just a little bit stronger it's gonna be mm -hmm. hard for them to come back from this it's, I mean I don't know maybe they'll have a better time on the side just because it's easier to get into their building if they um, can lock down the bolter then they then I think they can actually they can actually do this because the bolt being plus 27 or whatever he's right now like if you scratch out like I know it's 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 exaggerating but if you like delete that that plus 27 like if you delete the top frags for both teams um, they're only like what 20 30 points away tops uh, it's really just the bolt that's uh, that's making such a big score gap uh, for tide versus I just give me a second here while I unfreeze the stream Uh, while we wait, can I get some more IAs in chat? There's not enough. I'm disappointed <laughs> by this. We're going to make the PIL admins unban anime. Oh, man. So oppressive. I can't even put an anime logo in for my team. I try to put an anime name, everything banned. I can't even put an anime, anime out of a tag. Osprey, the only one on my side. PIL admins, fucking fascist ban. Like, Shaking my terrible. head. I'm an oppressed minority right now through hate weeps. Just waiting on the ref here. I'm gonna check chat, make sure he's not waiting for me. I already read it up for us. Okay. So yeah, probably just uh Ref's trying to start out a bit of the scoring stuff. Um, the uh, hosted uh, scoring system is really fantastic, so props to Halo for setting that up. But it does require a bit of fine-tuning, making sure that's all ready so that you guys get the same score as the ref has. Let's do a bit of a fly over here. Um, people who might have not have seen the full layout of the map. That's what that looks like. And you might think that uh, the tower here would be in play, maybe from an LA or something, but realistically, even if you fly up here as an LA, you only really have spots on the roof, and a lot of the gameplay here happens inside the building. Part of the reason what makes it so hard for the cam to fly around and follow fights. Um, so again, just another reason why, besides roof control for the bolt, I don't see LA's as a viable option here. That being said, with how strong the TR Walter has been this half, I think that VS have, have a case to play a Horizon LA um, with Icarus uh, jump jets. Yeah, just jump up onto the roof real quick. And yeah, like, get the because the idea is that, like, what would happen is, let's say that the Bolt's playing on the balcony right there, right? And you're a VSLA. You can still probably get uh, down here before, before you get shot. You might get spotted, but the idea is that you fly up quickly, get the pick, and then drop back down without having to worry about uh, getting killed by a heavy. Um, so we'll see. Um, that's my suggestion to them. I don't know if they have a LA on the roster, though, and sometimes it's better just to... If you don't have an actual good LA, just to play the heavy and try to get the flank on the Bolt. Um, but... With how well the uh, tide bolter is popping off, I is definitely going to make some some changes here. Okay, guys, we will start the second half on the next tick zero. So that is in one minute and forty eight seconds. Still a bit of time here. Yeah, I've got a long while to wait. So there's Still a good roof jump here again. off the rock. 
I don't know if you're familiar with that, but Gong, uh, at the opener, uh, I've seen teams either play on the ground floor or, you know, taking the, the rock roof climb um, pretty often. I know some of the more experienced teams might know about this more. Like, it's not it's not always the most obvious thing. You can jump from the rocks onto the roof here. The rocks onto the roof, yeah. yeah. And I'd like to see... Uh, actually, Ty had used that uh, at the beginning of on actually round start last half. It was mm. a, a question to just because it's such a... You add so much time you know, running around to go and jump off that rock into the roof when you could just as easily be safe walking down that, you know, lane. That being said, the idea, I think, is that... I th One minute till second half starts. The idea is that uh, you, you don't care about point at the start. And I'm not saying that's the strat. Like, it, there's whoever you ask is going to give you a different answer. Some teams really favor, like, you know, getting control right, right away, and some say, okay, let's get the wipe and then get cap. The way I played it, I think... Um, was very different than Tide. So we saw Tide really try to get that point as quickly as possible versus I, who stayed inside their building and shot down. Uh, I actually, I am on I's side here. I actually prefer like getting that. I don't mind taking a few extra seconds, getting the roof control, and then shooting down on the people trying to cap point. Uh, it didn't work for them, but uh, you know, maybe that's just a lack of one v one skill, a bit of gameplay mechanics I need cleaning up. But we'll see how they play this. Twenty seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and follow the. Uh, what is that Western team? Yeah, the Western team. Yeah, I'll follow I in. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Same loadout. Desi's up. Where's the hit? Where's the hit? Ooh, I saw some splash oh. damage. Did, did it Good hit, actually. Yep, pick on uh, someone uh, I have. On Jotun. Oh, that feels bad, dude. That feels real bad. Ascender there with the lucky Desi. Yeah, that's going to give Tide a massive advantage going into this opening fight just because <laughs> they're already down a man. Oh, wow, but two Tide heavies going down, trying to cross over to the Eye's balcony. So numbers are pretty much evened out, but Eye's going to have reinforcements coming in quicker. Oh, the Troll getting two quick picks. Getting a third, maybe. Gets the R. Yeah, only gets two. Putin saved him. Well, that's quick control of the building from Tide. And uh, once again, Anethal Balter setting up in a most likely going to be extremely difficult position to get rid of him playing on the mm -hmm. silos. Tide Heavy's once again playing super tight together. Oh, gets a quick pick. Actually, Tide Vulture coming inside, cleaning oh, up. Oh, good shot oh, from behind. Headshot, I think. Yeah. That was all headshots for the last, like, four kills there. Each of them got killed with a headshot. gets another pick on the Vulture from I with the pilot. pilot? Oh, my good gosh. Headshot. Just running through the building and just wiping. Yeah, just everywhere. wiping out. Yeah, I know. He's back on the roof now. Look at this positioning, dude. This is so, so aggressive. I mean, tide, two Tide Heavies on the uh, silos now. We're just going to be They're spotted out, too. This is rough because now they're going to get... Spot. Oh, good death. Someone gets Desi. Black Angel goes down. Jotun's stuck in uh, his bottom clothes. Oh my gosh. Max Big push into away. lobby from TR. Get yeah, Max but staying didn't alive. work. Holy moly. I is actually doing good here. Like, the... Actually doing work. I know they lost point cap. They're going to maybe touch it right now, but uh, fantastic actual playing together there. And Max staying alive. Max Suicide played really well on his bottom floor of that building. Mm -hmm. Staying alive, getting three picks. One of them was a Desi pick, but kept him alive enough for his teammates to come in and to allow him to get a third pick. No way. What a shot, dude. Fantastic gun. And I is now pushing into Doesn't the matter building. because the other bolt here. Did he trade that out? That was a hit. That was a hip fire headshot. So. Anita will doing exactly what we expected. Plus 32 now, extending his lead even farther than it was. Before. Really good play. And I just pushed up in Tide's building right now. Even I'm out inside, but uh, have they swapped? No, no I don't think Eyes even. Yeah, the Eyes just not even. He's backed out and he's going back to his building because there was only one Tide heavy and one Eye heavy left <laughs> after that trade.
Many in lobby now. Both of them playing yeah, around buildings, basically. Playing outside. There's. I think Tri Tide is trying to make sure they heavies. get the cap through, but it's not working. A lot of eye heavies outside the side door. Tide. Two go down. Big drop from tank. Bunny hop Just kill on Black Angel. Yeah, he's caught out of position. Like when you're stuck in this corner, you're really stuck. Like you, you, your options are limited. You can't go right. You can't, can't go behind out. you. And the client side always favors the person that's peeking. Yep. Like I said, I think I is going to have an easier time just because I think the Balter doesn't have as lethal of like viewpoints uh, mm -hmm. on Tide. Mm -hmm. or I, I mean, you say that, but building. he's still already like plus five this I mean, half. He's still pogging, yeah. <laughs> he's still pogging extremely. But well, you're right, it's not as. Uh, and like it's the spawn lock is not there. They can Two eye heavies down. Without being body shot. Anethal gets another knife. He's Anethal. Huge gun. Insane right now. Yeah, he's. he's Poggin. He's Poggin, dude. I really want to see him. Like, I actually didn't know about him too much. Like, I've seen him play once or twice, um, but not super well. I don't really know the teams here super, super well. I'd actually like to see him play with more of an experienced team and see if he can keep up that same kind of bolt-heavy oh, presence on... Because uh... Pale is like... Yeah, it's a, it's a bolt-heavy map, you're right. But it's not, like, gone and heavy. I want to see what he plays, like, on another map. No, he's playing really well, because bolt isn't this effective on Pale most mm -hmm. of the time. Not when you're this close. Jotun getting the kill there. Bolts left alone. Ooh, gets refragged by the heavy. Retro goes down as well. Ooh, big flank from the window. I, I'm going to call that good comms. That was really, really well done. I was saying about this being a small brain map, but that was a big brain play. Or good timing. Could be luck. Most of I on respawn right now. Let's see what path they choose. Looks like... Oh, I see. I don't like... This drop here because exactly what happened here is uh, what I would expect where you get spotted from silos before you make it into your into your building and now he's going to be spotted he knows where if he's playing with his team then the then tide probably knows where the bundle of oh my, oh my god too. MVP of the match by far like this is like this is some shelm level bolting I kind of want to just follow him for a minute and see what he what I've been doing. It's just been pogging out wherever he goes. He's like playing like a heavy. He's not even like staying on the roof. He's just he's no, jumping he's everywhere. Super aggressive. Everywhere amp out from one team. That's that's uh, that's gonna drain shields for people who don't know how amps work. Stay alert. Enemy heavy nearby. Enemy heavy. Uh yeah, looks like I heavies are definitely playing together now. I like this. They're, they're definitely playing tighter together. They really gotta push this though. They really gotta push that frag. Oh des oof. Same thing happened last match where uh, Desi does a lot of damage and unfortunately if you don't get the Desi kill and then you kill him with an LMG or something, that's still going to be a plus one instead of a net zero. I actually Double peak. push into their building, wiping out Tide heavies that are inside. Yep. Tan Bank goes down, uh, leaving the I heavy Navis alone. Ooh. Misses a shot. That's the 50% HSR I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming of. Retro alone on the bow Nethal gets bolted. Bolt at plus 38. Still this man has 49 He's kills. Riker has one. One, one that counts. He drops onto suicide and takes out suicide. He's just going. He's everywhere. Sorry, I'm trying to follow the camera around. It's just like he, he's. I can't even follow the cam fast enough. It's getting super laggy for the stream if I try to jump around and follow the. He's just everywhere right now, just wiping everyone out. I mean, he's dropping. Hard carry like for the heavy. team. You know how some teams like have like players that are like all even and you see point gaps that are like, you know, five point difference or whatever? This is not one of those games. Big, big fight out on, uh, what is that? The stairs? Yeah, oh, this is the... Finally goes down. I, Ooh, open Walter stairs. Finally takes out a new tool. Open stairs, big kills. Sorry, close stairs. Oh, that's, um, that's, spell that's stair. a wipe on Tide, actually. I think I got control of the building again. Yeah, it's Tide all on respawn. I think they should take this time to set up in their building and wait for Tide to come in, but I... They don't have to... Oh, they do have time to cap. Seven minutes left. Like, they they can come back. This is... The, the point gap is not as wide as it was before in terms of how fast it's growing. Like, yeah, it's widened since the halftime, but uh, it's not widened as quickly. And uh, with just over 90 points, or just under, rather, um, I really think that I has opportunity here to at least at least get within you know 30 40 points of Tide if they play like they just did wiping Tide out. 
see how the play is. Oh my gosh, the windows here are awful. Oh no. The niece was... Did he get two picks? People. Oh. He got one pick. I don't know if he got the second one or if he bought it. Damage assist are so strong out. here. Verinda, big damage on Riker. All the way. Oh, this, this, I mean, this feels bad. Like, look at this guy. Look at this body. You're playing here and you get killed from around that corner. But Anith was just playing so aggressive. He went. At, at what point did he get over there. to the other building? I don't even remember him getting. He, he ran, he ran up the stairs, jumped out the second story. Went through side door? And came through the side door to <laughs> What a huge blank, he's, dude. He's, like, he's just playing so aggressive. He's, pl he's playing like a heavy, it's actually crazy. Bunch of Tide heavies stacked up uh, outside the point, killing a lot of eye inside their own lobby, and now pushing in with Desis. That was a mistaken push from the uh, eye heavy here. Knew his team is wiped, still tried to push in, goes down to retro, and being crossfired from silos. I don't know what Black Angel was doing there. He knew his team was wiped. He was the last one alive. There were four tight heavies for sure. He probably dropped down from the second floor, maybe the balk. I would have waited. Uh, just hidden, honestly. It's like being stuck in a cubby on Paris. Sometimes you just have to wait. Navim is going to get shot from Tad. Tan, sorry. It's such a, such a difficult thing to deal with a bolter this, like, that's pogging out this much. Just this much, yeah. You can't you can't push him with three heavies to take him out because if he's playing super aggressive and most of the time he's ahead of his heavies, if you try and peek him, there's gonna be three or four heavies watching right that behind. Door that you're gonna have to go yeah. through. Yeah. You can't push him and he just keeps quick peeking a door and bolting you until there's no one left. Yeah. It's such a difficult thing to take you know, deal with. And again, this is where I think that an LA has to come into play because oh, that being said, he gets counterbolted. So bolt and counterbolt are the only Sorry, Counterbolt and LA are the only two really good counters to uh, to an enemy bolt on any map, but especially a map like like Pale. Uh, so if the heavies aren't able to do it and your bolts aren't keeping up, then I think on you this gotta pull half, I think on this half, I think counterbolting is going to be the only thing to help because just how Anith was playing on this half, he's just playing, playing inside, inside a lot too. Building. He's not yeah. on the roof. Like last yeah. half would have been good because he was playing on balcony and roof a lot. Mm -hmm. Just because he could, but this side here he's just playing lobbies. Yeah, that. he's just running around the building, just bolting people like a madman. Yeah. Tide once again playing super tight together as heavies. Uh, they're kind of like rolling through eye, again, eyes building. Look, it's three heavies, again. butt to butt. A center <laughs> out of med kits looks like. Doesn't matter. Oh, should have been the first one to back out if he didn't have meds. Varunda and Riker. Look at this communication. Did, Riker did not know that Varunda was back there. They still got the kill, but really that was sloppy on VS part. Whoever was uh, one we winning up should have been calling for Riker's help. Jordan getting bolted from side door, bodied again, not killed though. Oh, bolted wow. just really, really strong there in the silos. Desi, was that a trade? Out from a Desi. Yeah. Not traded. Uh, trying to flip back. Okay, they're not flipping back. I think they've given up on point at this point. Three minutes left. Uh, no time for VS to get the cap. There's a single eye heavy on top of the tide building, and he's just good win from the Orion. Three tide heavies. You know what I'm actually surprised I haven't seen a lot of is uh, any Punishers, uh, because Punisher has a really really nice 0.75 ADS speed. Oh, double pick from the uh, peaking heavies, and none of them got killed. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I was just saying, so 0.75 from the uh, Punisher is actually really, really strong, and it has a faster time to kill, um, I believe, than the uh, on body shots anyways. Um, so the fact that it's not being used, maybe um, just people don't like it, but uh, especially when you're playing on the roof here, it's really, really easy to control weapon. Uh, and uh, yeah, just curious. I think we just had a team kill come out from Putin. Quite possible. And Ethan Wall with low HP gets whoops stuck on the railing. Back into his building. Oh my gosh. Back into his building. Little cubby here is really, really hard to play against because when you're hidden here as a heavy, the only way you're gonna get pushed is if someone drops to point, which is an excellent bait because what you do is you have another heavy waiting at the window or a bolt if if you're even luckier on the roof, uh, shooting down on them. Anith, look at this positioning. It's going down, yes. Yeah, All the way up on the balcony. Impressive. Yeah, like he knows there's a heavy on point. He was just trying to get that one pick, I think, before he went down. Vitamin Putin up on the bow goes down. Oh, no, no. He's not going down. Uh, throws a conk out. Kills Max Suicide. Good kill. Max Suicide. Yeah. Max, I think, being maybe a bit too aggressive there. Uh, or he might not have had spots yet and uh, jumped there a bit prematurely. Wow. When you jump, you have a bigger cone of fire. And if you don't take a second after you land and you start shooting right away, which is what he did, then uh, your bullets are going to go everywhere except where you want. 
Was Nav just the initial bolter on the I side, or did he just switch on to bolt? He just switched on to it, I believe, because uh, he's been picking really. Well. I actually he's recognize Navimus more as a bolt than as a heavy. Yeah, he's been counter bolting really effectively. I haven't seen, you know, other than that one time that Navimus was on that like balk position, I haven't seen him much. It's because he's been counter bolted pretty effect effectively. Mm -hmm. Conk's out on side where, again, a smart conk, because what that does is that even if you don't get a hit, you know that there's nobody there, and you can now peek with your team without worrying about getting killed. Ooh, big double pick, neither of them going down. 1v1 skill really working out here. Good flank from Max Suicide, but uh, you saw this, right? So, so Tan, to having taken damage already, had shields cracked, backed out, waited for withdrawal to re-peek for him. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that, that kind of, like, buddy play here, where you, when you get lit, you back out, wait for a buddy to push in your place. Super, super strong playstyle. Really what's make Pale's, really what's, uh, what makes Pale, good shot from Navis, really what makes Pale, uh, like a, a team-based game in terms of buddying. What is he doing? Am I, am I, am I watching this right? There's the shot. Oh, I'm missing that. <laughs> Both teams, I don't think communicating at all where the other players are. Um, oh, just man. relying on their ability to play in buddies. Navimus goes down. Ten as well, pushing from Balk with the bolt. Look how far the bolt's pushed up. Playing a window on respawn. This is actually legal to use, so unlike Aiken Southern Labs where uh, the window for L building is... No oh way! God. Uh, yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> I, if, we, if someone wants to make a montage of, of this game, uh, make sure that you're getting the bolt kills in there. End of match. End of match. Oh, that's, GG. That's match right there. Um, I, wow, dude. 223 against I-120. <sighs> yeah, that was... Just going as much as I was saying that point gap was shrinking, off. it really didn't towards the end. I mean, uh, Nathal is playing extremely bonkers on that. Just uh, That's insane, especially on Pale, where... It's a bolter isn't really super effective at getting kills, only just really locking down a lane for the most part, just because you can't, you know, if yeah. the bolter's on yeah. a roof, you can't go on that roof or peek a few of the windows because you're going to get bolted. But mm -hmm. just a Neath will just it's everywhere. Just I, it didn't matter where he went, he just got picks. Yep, no, that's exactly what I what I saw as well. Um, Varunda at plus 14 on Tides, uh, doing a good job there. Ascender minus 7, so actually surprising that they actually have somebody going negative with, uh, negative with, what is that, 19 kills? Of which 18 counted, so probably one Desi kill in there. But still not bad, I mean his team did a really good job, it didn't matter if one person was negative. Um, but it's funny because you always see like some variation in skill levels on the same team, and when you compare Anethul's, sorry, Aneth, Anethul? Anethul? I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but Anethul I'm gonna call him. Uh, net 43 to Ascender's minus 7. It's just ridiculous that you can have such a disparity between players. Um, 59 kills on an Ethel as well. Top frag of the game by, I want to say, almost double. Yeah, uh, so Varunda at 34 kills and nearly half, or just over half of what an Ethel has. Uh, withdrawal plus 16, 35 kills, definitely respectable as well. Uh, top fragging heavy for his team. Good work there. And then uh, Tadbank at plus 9, 33 kills. Again, a lot of kills there. Probably just died a lot more. Uh, looks like he was playing a bit too aggressively. A lot of damage assists, though. 23, some of the most on his team. So a lot of the kills he was getting were... Uh, so a lot of the damage he was doing was then killed by another player. Um, yeah, HSR, again, don't worry about the heavies. But Anithual, 54% means that half the shots, half of his 59 kills were, in fact, body shots. <laughs> which is very frustrating playing he, he to play against a as a heavy. And, he got a lot yeah. of and a pile That's of true. as well. But, I, I mean, that's just really good play. It's being a hard carry. Uh, on the I'd side, actually, though, Max Suicide playing really well even for that, getting 33 picks and 34 deaths. So, playing really well. Uh, Navimus actually did really good on the bolt that second half. I, mm -hmm. For a long period of time, I didn't see Anethal doing anything just because he kept getting counter bolted. Yep. And it was really effective. Uh, I don't know who was subbed out on that half, because there's, there's Nerder, Nerd. I think Nerder was the one who got subbed, because I didn't see him. He yeah, was the okay. bolt in the first half, I think, and I think they subbed him. Okay, subbed him out. The Riker also only getting a score of 3 of minus 17. Black Angel on uh, minus 20. Uh, Jotam minus 18, and Retro Gamer at minus 8. Also playing decently well. Uh, compared to the rest of the team, mm -hmm. almost staying there with uh, Max Suicide. Uh, honestly, um, 
and I don't mean to accuse anybody, like Pill is of course trying to get better as infantry gameplay, but uh, I think that I needs to work on their 1v1 ability a little more. They have some heavies who I think are definitely can, can hold their own. Retro uh, doing a good job, Jotun, Black Angel actually getting quite a few kills. Um, Retro and Navimus, Max Suicide especially, um, but uh, I think Riker and Nerdar, uh, just a bit extra time, a bit of practice, like honestly that's what Pill's for, like play, play again next year, start playing some Pog, start playing some uh, pickups and stuff, like three kills in a match against a better team happens um it's just about practicing getting a little better uh and i think that uh, if i continues to play in future years which i hope they do um they can definitely get better this is a lot of their, their first time playing 6v6 uh and uh like a lot of teams that are new to 6v6 format you're not going to always be the best and uh yeah definitely good learning opportunity i don't think this was like a crushing defeat like if this was i versus like this is like be hot and like something else that would have been a meme but uh Definitely room for improvement here. I think if I watches what Tide did in this game and try to tries to mimic that, they definitely have a good a good fighting chance. And I'd like to see them kind of use the stuff they've learned in future matches. I know that many of the teams in this, these brackets still have either two or three matches left to go uh, over the course of this weekend, next weekend, and maybe the one after that too. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, overall, really good showing. Uh, Tide clearly taking the lead here with the bolt going plus forty three MVP of the game by uh, a huge margin. Um, I'm gonna check to see if there's anyone for reviews. I don't i don't think there's anyone for interviews but i'm gonna do a quick check here yeah no one's ready downstairs so well, i'm gonna go ahead and call the game here uh, any final thoughts from uh from Ibagong? uh no just uh an ethel pogging out being mm -hmm. insane that's, that's about the only thing really uh, yep. also actually putin getting 67 percent headshot ratio uh, as a heavy which is nutty nutty but uh yeah good aim i guess Anyways, uh, we will wrap up the stream here. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. We have a couple more matches, including a match with uh, Bagong and our team. Uh, we're going to be playing ATP tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is in two hours. So be sure to tune in then and give us a, a bit of a cheer. We could definitely use the support. Uh, ATP, very strong team, very very hard match. Um, eh, all in jest. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see you guys later. Thank you for tuning in. And we're going to throw up the post-splash screen. See you guys later.